Hi! Today I'm going to be talking about a piece of sporting equipment relevant to one of my sports. I've been racing since I was 8 years old. I started in go-karts and I eventually moved into half-scale cars called Super Cubs where I traveled all across the Midwest, all through Iowa, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, and Wisconsin, racing at over 16 different racetracks and turning over 8,000 miles of traveling in one summer. <laughs> Um, but in the past few years, I've moved up to racing full-size stock cars here at Rockford Speedway. I currently drive a an 89 Ford Mustang, a stick shift, so that was a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I want to focus on the safety aspect of racing for me. I have an abundance of safety equipment that I wear anytime I go on the track, from my fire suit to prevent me in case of a fire, to my helmet, to my gloves, to my racing shoes to my five seat belts that I have to buckle up with. But the piece I wanna focus on today is called the Hans device. Now Hans is an ac acronym meaning head and neck support device. The Hans device is used to prevent drivers from sustaining uh, whiplash injuries or skull injuries in case of an accident where they go head under the wall or head on with another car. So their neck moves with their torso or their body and it doesn't go side to side moving freely or violently going forward and backward. The Hans device increases level of safety for competitors all across the country, and it can be used to prevent tragedies from occurring in the future. But before we get into the before we get into how the Hans device increases driver safety, let's cover a little bit of the individual history of the Hans device itself. According to an article at thecatchfence.com, the first Hans device first became a concept in the 1980s and the first patent was released in 1987. The first crash sled tests were done with the people at Wayne State University in 1989, with those being the first kind of test done in America. So Hans devices first came around in the United States in the mid to late 1980s and are still very popular for racers today. But now going to look at the safety impact, we have to first look at a tragedy. The most common tragedy we know from a head injury or neck injury would be with Dale Earnhardt Sr. and the 2001 Daytona 500 where he crashed on the final lap and eventually died from his injuries. Um, in an article written by Kevin Munsour and Karim Nice, Dale Earnhardt Sr. suffered from a fracture at the base to his skull which was obtained after his car slammed head-on into an outside retaining wall. So like I had previously mentioned, when racers slam into the outside wall, it's concrete, and cars going up to close to 200 miles an hour, when they hit that wall, the car wants to stop, and that's when drivers' heads and necks can move around, and they become kind of like a bobblehead, in a sense, and everything wants to start moving around, and if you're not wearing a Hans device, that's when things can get very dangerous for your head and neck. Huh. But in another article written by Dan Sherman, he writes, the Hans device works like an airbag. Uh, in a forward crash, it allows the driver's neck to move with the torso instead of overloading the neck. So he means that your Hans device goes on your shoulders and your seat belts come over and you're locking, you're locking your body into the seat and it goes on through the Hans device and it hooks onto the Hans device. The Hans device hooks onto the helmet so a uh, driver's head can't move from side to side overloading it just because the body's moving forward and moving around it keeps all the bodily components moving together instead of individually which is where injury can occur um but how does the Hans device work it you, itself you may ask according to the website driver 61 the Hans device slips around the driver's neck and the two tethers hook to the helmet and shoulder the shoulder restraints hold the Hans device down like I was just explaining. Now I have my helmet, my racing helmet, and my Hans device. These are the tethers that the article is talking about. They hook directly into the helmet, like so, and they hook so your Hans device is attached to the helmet. And then the Hans device would go over my neck, and when I pulled my seatbelts tight, it would pull the Hans device down tight against my body. So in case of an injury or a crash, my neck would move with my body and my head and neck would move together. They would not move individually, which is where skull where you can get fractures at the base of your skull. 
and eventually that could lead to brain damage. And like I previously mentioned, these are the types of injuries that Dale Earnhardt Sr. eventually died from. Um, but how does Hunt, but how do Hans devices change the racing world today? Uh, in an article written by Sharice Threewitt, uh, there were 126 deaths following the 10 years after Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s crash. These crashes that I am reporting occurred on drag steps on drag strips and as many as 34 of those driver deaths, also known as 27%, could have been prevented if they had been wearing a Hans device. Hans devices help save lives and many tracks across the country require that drivers use a Hans device before racing at the racetrack just because of the key, cr the key safety component that this device adds to the drivers. Racing is not, racing is not an easy sport there's a level of danger to it, and devices like the Hans device add a safety net, in a sense, and I think that, safe, that Hans devices are a crucial piece of equipment in, in protecting racing competitors and can, be, and can be used to prevent tragedies from becoming a common occurrence of the future in the racing world. Thank you.